people of reddit what is the stupidest way you have fricked up while cooking i was chopping onions i kept slicing them up putting the peels in the bowl and the onion chunks in the trash i did that four onions in a row without realizing this sounds like something i would do while drunk cooking chef here catching a falling knife by the blade grabbing a metal pan handle barehanded out of the oven rubbing my eye after cutting a crap ton of chilies lost an eyebrow lighting a pilot light uh, try touching your penis after cutting chilies was so confused as to why it felt like i was peeing but really i wasn't not me but my family has a famous story about my uncle it was i think my aunt and uncle's anniversary my uncle decided to surprise my aunt by making dinner that night when normally she does the cooking he digs out a recipe book finds a recipe for pan fried fish of some sort shops for the ingredients and gets to work she comes in as he's halfway through cooking the meal and sees him scratching his head while he puts some white sugar into the pan with the fish yes sugar she quietly backs away and lets him continue as it turns out some pages stuck together in his cookbook and he didn't realize he started a pan fried salmon recipe and finished with another recipe that involves some sort of caramelized sugar glaze he ends up serving my aunt a plate of fried fish with a caramel glaze and on this fateful day sugar fish was born that reminds me of that friends episode where rachel makes half a trifle and half a shepherd's pie custard good jam good meat good when i was in a school in between boot camp and getting to your ship in the navy some butthole put pop tarts in the microwave in the foil wrapper for two minutes and walked away this was early in the morning on a freezing cold saturday in january in illinois everyone had to evacuate and our microwave privileges were taken away i can still hear the chief screaming at him you expect emmy to send your butt to be an engineer on a ship right who the frick microwaves pop tarts you're supposed to toast them you're supposed to grumpily eat them at your desk because you didn't have time to make breakfast cold breaking off the outside pieces until you get to the sugar and then regret your decision. I came home for lunch, started baking frozen corn dogs, and decided I would have a bowl of ramen while I was waiting for the corn dogs. Looked up, saw the time, ran back to work, and forgot the corn dogs. Came home that evening and the house smells like warm bread. I poke my head into the kitchen and the oven light isn't on so I go to bed. The next morning I get up and the house still smells like warm baked bread. I'm sniffing the air, trying to figure it out, and it hits me. The corn dogs. I take them out of the oven and they are totally black with the sticks still intact. I broke one in half and you could still see the round hot dog part in the middle. Took it to my geology class and asked the instructor if I were to compress this pure carbon would I get a tiny diamond? She was unsure. Moral. Don't leave corn dogs in southern at 375 for 18 hours. There's a recipe in my 1985 edition of the joy of cooking titled one egg cake. It's easy, tastes great, and if you're low on eggs, it's a go-to recipe. Couple of years ago I made it, and guess which ingredient I forgot to include? Hint, the one egg. That cake did not turn out well. There's actually a type of cake called a wacky cake which has no eggs. I think it's a depression era recipe, but your regular cakes just fall apart without the egg. Do not throw crap in boiling oil to avoid being splashed. I'm the type of idiot that used to edge toward the pan and throw the meat and then run away hoping to not get seared and burning oil. I try from across the room sometimes being completely unaware that you can't avoid the splash by just easing the meat in. Armed with a shield of kitchen dish cloth I threw the meat from the island to the pan on the stove. About 3 feet. I missed. The meat hit the pan handle and the whole thing flipped over. Boiling oil went flying everywhere. Oh crap. I run over to save the meat from the floor. 5 second rule, and I step in the freaking oil, burning the crap out of my foot. Keep me away from kitchens. Similarly, do not throw water into a pan of boiling burning oil. You will burn your house down. Once forgot to put eggs in a recipe that really needed eggs. I also tried to make brandy ginger snaps. Don't really know how to describe what happened but I ended up covered in molasses and drunk with brandy. So basically the recipe was like, make cookies and you were like, instructions unclear, got drunk, bathed in molasses. 
Not cooking, but cleaning up after. I was scratching at a piece of previously melted but now hardened piece of cheese on a plate when a splinter of cheese shoved under my fingernail. The first and only time I have heard of a grilled cheese related injury. One time when I was 13, I put a pan of olive oil on high and forgot about it. I came back and it was flaming. So I tried to put it out with water, I might have burned the ceiling a bit, and my hands, and the paper towel rack next to the stove. It took me a while to feel comfortable in the kitchen again. Sprinkled cinnamon and sugar all over the chicken instead of chicken seasoning. To be fair, the labels, both Kroger brand, and contents looked identical. I was baking apricot squares at age 10. The instruction said add 1 stroke 2 cup of flour, cinnamon, salt, I added half a cup of each. Classic instructions unclear. I once put some water on for spaghetti, then, I went upstairs for a bit, forgetting that I put it on. At that point, it had been 3 hours, so I panicked and ran downstairs, and found that I never turned the burner on in the first place. As a teenager I thought I had found a genius workaround for pasta. Just boil the noodles in the pasta sauce. I thought I was the Thomas Edison of culinary arts. The product was pretty much horrible and tasted like stomach pain. Actually there are a lot of recipes that use this method. I make chicken riggies this way. The key is you have to start your sauce at a thinner consistency than you ultimately want it to be. Adding things like cream at the end to get it all to bind. The pasta cooks and the sauce reduces at the same time. Teenager you was right. Just didn't take it far enough. I tried cooking rice once. I put the rice in water in a pot on the cooktop. Then I tried stirring it a bit with a plastic cooking spoon. I walked away and came back to the smell of melting plastic and burnt rice. Rice. 10 stroke 10. Rice with melted plastic. The 8th of May 2010. Thank you for your suggestion. My sister-in-law once burned orange juice. They were just married. She couldn't get the OJ concentrate out of the can, so she put it in the pan she was eating. Just for a moment. Her new husband distracted her and the juice and pan were forgotten until they started to smoke. You know how never put tin foil in the microwave is one of those common knowledge things? Well I found out the hard way. I found this out when I reheated a Wendy's burger. For some reason I thought it was just tin foil, not the foil they used to wrap burgers in. It caught fire. I read what I thought were instructions on mac and cheese and mixed the stuff in the order listed. It was just the list of ingredients. When it got to the OK first, I knew I had fricked up. First read all of the instructions then cook. Wanted to see if my noodles were soft yet so I stuck my hand into a pot of boiling water. The noodles weren't even done colon. I, I, don't even know what to say. Not me but my auntie who, bless her heart, is one of the sweetest old southern women you would ever meet. Well, she made a banana pudding one day, had a lovely meringue on top, was absolutely beautiful, except right when she took it out of the oven she put her hand on her hip and said lord, I forgot the bananas, you had to be there but it was hilarious. I've known enough southern women that I can picture this perfectly. We used to make cinnamon and sugar toaster frequently when I was a child that we had a container of it pre-mixed in our pantry. One day when I was too young to read label, I grabbed the brownish granular mix, sprinkled it on my toast and took a big bite of Cajun chicken seasoned bread. Around the same age my sister asked me to make her toast. I took out the margarine contained and put some on her toast. She took a big bite and insisted I had messed it up. The margarine container had been reposed for mashed potatoes. Mashed taters on bread is delicious. Not me, but my dad one night when we were growing up. He was hopeless in the kitchen. Mom had a 9-5 type job so was always home in time to make dinner. One night she had to stay late but had gotten out what she was going to make that night in order to thaw it. She called dad and told him what time she'd be home. Walked him through getting dinner started. I was about 7 and my brother was 2. He had boiled and drained pasta and was adding salt when the shaker top came off and the entire salt container dumped out on the noodles. He didn't know what to do when we were kids so we just thought it was the end of the world. It was ruined. Instead of thinking like a rational adult and rinsing them off or using some other normal method, 
he went and got the vacuum. The noodles were dry, so the pile of salt was on top. So he thought the vacuum hose would be perfect to take off the excess salt. Mum called right then to say she was finally done and on her way home. I answered the phone, which worried her, so she asked what dad was doing. Vacuuming the noodles became kind of a catchphrase around our house after that. TL. DR. Dad tried to vacuum extra salt off noodles. You know how sometimes you'll pour something out of a pot and it'll drip? That's no good. You don't want drippy things. So before I could let a drop of sauce run down the side of the pot, I quickly decided to lick it. Good news. The sauce didn't drip. Bad news. I died. OP is kill. Capital F. One time I accidentally weaponized the air in my apartment. I decided that I wanted to make a snack. But all I had around the house that day were some potatoes and oil. Instead of making fries like any normal person, I decided I was going to make potato medallions with some kick. So I poured oil into a pan, got it nice and crackling, and dropped in my potato slices, and then I added my kick, sriracha. It turns out if you add a hot sauce to oil that's heated to the point of crackling, the oil will propel the hot sauce into the air and turn pretty much all the oxygen in your apartment into pepper spray. I coughed and sputtered and rolled around on the ground for a while rubbing my eyes and eventually got my food into my bedroom and put a towel under my door while I waited for the assaultive air to dissipate. About an hour later, I heard the door unlock and ran outside to warn my roommate, but alas, I immediately dropped back to the ground coughing, as did he, and I choked out an explanation for what was going on. He barricaded up his room. And I did the same, but we didn't see each other for days while we ducked through the main area. It really stuck around for a while. Also since we lived in MN at the time and it was winter, we couldn't open windows or anything for fear of freezing ourselves and our poor pepper sprayed cat to death. The potatoes were actually really good though. TLDR. Tried to make spicy potatoes. Pepper sprayed myself and my roommate, plus the cat. Well, now you know how to mace an entire building. That's a potentially good thing. I was cooking rice in a square Pyrex dish covered in foil. I took it out of the 400 degree oven when I thought it was done. After taking a small spoonful, I determined that the rice needed more water so that it would come out fluffier. Without taking a moment to ponder the potential consequences, I poured some tap water directly into the dish. It exploded in my hand. Shards of the dish went flying. Luckily, they didn't hit me. Also, they remained in large pieces so they were easy to find. Unfortunately, they still retained enough heat to tattoo my kitchen floor with little burn marks. And I had to start over some rice. I used a pot this time and every time since. I bought some tenderloin and cut a few homemade filet mignons for Valentine's Day dinner. Well, I was pan searing them and in addition to realizing too late that my hood fan was not strong enough and having the smoke set off every smoke alarm in the house, I left a plastic spatula sitting in the pan while I went to turn one off and open windows. Came back to a handle and a bunch of liquefied black plastic all over my $20 pound steaks. On the bright side, most of it was able to just be scraped off and the steaks were still very good. To this day if I want to pan sear something I just put the pan on my grill outside cause good lord the smoke. Removed the bag full of giblets and other unidentifiable bits from inside the turkey before cooking. Didn't realize there was another cavity with a second bag for the turkey neck. Picture a thanksgiving table full of friends and family and someone saying. What the heck is this while grabbing a corner of the bag and pulling out a phallic shaped monstrosity wrapped in plastic. I was not aware that you had to cook potatoes before you mashed them. Hurt my hand rather a lot before my mother came in and called me an idiot. I was boiling water. I went to play a game of Dota and forgot about it. By the time I remembered all of the water had evaporated and the pot was ruined. Thinking that a head of garlic was called a garlic clove. The salsa came out light pink instead of red and could kill a vampire from half a mile away. Not me but a friend of mine decided he would play bartender for the night. This genius decides that he's going to make mojitus. Puts the sour mix rum and everything into the shaker. Then pours in club soda and begins to shake. Two minutes later we're all mopping up the floor and wiping our phones clean. 
LPT for your friend, Mojitus shouldn't be shaken or made with sour mix. Tried to broil a tray of bacon in the oven during a barbecue to make enough for 20 people without spending an hour pan frying it. It was going great until I left it for like 10 seconds alone. All it takes. Bacon cooks slowly until it reaches the right temperature and then bam is just goes up. Plus all the fat started smoking and the whole thing caught fire and before I know it smokes bellowing out my oven. The entire tray was on fire. Had to shut the oven off. Take the pan out. Caught my oven mitts on fire. And I put it out with another pan and snuffed it. Took like 4 weeks for the smell of burnt bacon to go away. Horrible. Under a broiler. Yeah, you gotta watch that crap like a hawk. The kitchen ninja way to do it is to roast the bacon for an hour or so at about 350F. The meat part cooks. The fat part gets all melt in your mouth good. And omg, it's like bacon too. I used butter to coat the pan, and the butter all evaporated, leaving my pan uncoated. I thought it would be a great idea to use oil, on a hot pan. Slight pan fire, the shrimp were slightly burned. While camping, I grabbed the bug spray instead of the pan. They had very similar cans. I didn't notice until I took the first bite. A guy in our BBQ asked if he could use regular coal instead of charcoal. After many people discouraging it, he still tried it and said yeah it was bad. Not me and not exactly cooking, but my friend was having a debate with his flatmates at uni about plates heating up in the microwave. He was adamant that if you put a plate in the microwave it would heat up. They, being science students, were adamant that since a plate shouldn't contain any water it won't heat up. So to prove them wrong he put a plate in the microwave for 10 minutes. When he took it out it was so hot it welded itself to the worktop and gave off such a weird smell everyone in the flat fell asleep for the next 2 hours. They only realized later that maybe the toxic plate fumes had something to do with it. True story, one time when I was little, my mom asked me to prepare a salad for dinner before she got home. Naturally the first thing I did was chop up and wash the lettuce for the salad. However, the lettuce was now all wet, so naturally, I put the lettuce in the microwave to dry it off. After that the lettuce was too hot from the microwave so naturally, I put it in the freezer to cool it off before dinner, and come dinner time I went to the freezer and pulled out a bowl of wilted, frozen lettuce and proudly explained to my parents how ingenious I was in preparing it. Have not been able to live that one down to this day. My flatmate from college was a nightmare in the kitchen. Once, he wanted to make baked chicken. Yet, he couldn't seem to understand that in order to cook chicken, you first had to thaw it. Instead, he assumed that you could just turn the oven up higher to take the chill off the frozen chicken. Ended up with chicken that was blackened on the outside, while somehow completely frozen inside. Finally, once he accepted that chicken does in fact need to be thawed, he started doing so, but he for whatever reason would always thaw the chicken in really odd places. Once I found uncovered chicken cutlets hung along the shower rod. His reasoning? He figured the water that was produced during thawing would just drip into the bathtub and make for easy cleanup. I was told to cook baked beans one day for dinner. I grabbed the tin of beans, cranked the oven up to 220 celsius and shoved them in. 5-10 minutes later I heard a massive bang. The oven was sufficiently damaged to say the least. This is entitled how I turned the oven green. When I was a kid I, like many other kids, was easily influenced by advertising on TV. I saw Bill Cosby's Jello Jigglers commercials and decided that plain Jello wasn't good enough for me. I needed my Jello to be in fun exciting shapes. My friend and I decided to make this ourselves and found us some green Jello. Our plan stalled when we couldn't find an appropriate square shaped baking dish. Welp, what could we use? Oh I know, a pizza pan, that'll do. The pan was like, one stroke four thin. We carefully poured the jello syrup into the thin pizza pan, and then started the transfer to the fridge which, by the way was on the other side of the kitchen, and I doubt we had looked ahead to making room for the huge pizza pan. On the way to the fridge we passed by the white stove and this is about where the entire pan toppled over. Green jello syrup went everywhere, but most importantly got all into the front screen of the oven, which my mom was never, ever able to properly clean out. I had turned the oven green. To this day I've never eaten jello jigglers. For the record, I am pretty good cook. 
I cook just for myself sometimes for my gf since she's vegetarian. But when I am drunk and I cook you something, stay away from it. Once at friend's party I was crap faced and you know when you're hungry and drunk, there's no way of stopping you. It wasn't my house so I politely asked my friend if it is okay if I make some of my famous omelette and also clean up afterwards. Since he was passed out, he didn't contradict. I did everything right except that I'm a stock oil for vinegar. You don't have to be an expert to know that it smelled terrible, but since my smelling abilities are turned off after being poisoned with alcohol, I finished cooking with some shrooms, cheese, special flavoring it, but standard stuff. Also I closed kitchen door so none smells my piece of artwork and I can eat all by myself. Halfway through my vinegar journey, I still haven't noticed something's wrong. Yeah, mixing tequila and bourbon. Passed out friend woke up and walked in. He asked what the frick is that smell and as he said that I immediately knew what's up and threw up back to my plate what I ate and added some of my own stuff. We both continued outside to puke. And when we got back we found friend's brother over my omelette. Making funny faces and telling us this tastes kinda weird. It smelled. Tasted terrible. But he ate like 2 stroke 3. We just turned around and went for a puke again. There was no time telling his brother what happened. When we got back he finished the omelette. We told him what was wrong. He threw up in the living room on a TV and his own girlfriend. She tried running to the kitchen but she bashed her leg on the sofa. Blood everywhere. I ended up driving her to hospital. Drunk. Both smelling like puke. Two toes broken. I haven't drank tequila and bourbon since. Summer 2011. True story. I don't think you need the true story. It's too awful to be made up. Made me a pretty kick butt lasagna for myself. Tomato sauce with meat and tomato. White sauce with cheese and a huge amount of cheese. All went okay with the cooking and I let it rest and all. All fine until I took the first bite and the taste was horrible. Then I realized I picked an eucalyptus leaf instead of bay leaf for the tomato sauce. At least it was a tiny lasagna for myself and no a huge one. See. You invented colosane. Cutting up jalapenos to put in jambalaya. Went and peed, with my penis, before washing hands. I was trying all kinds of things to make it stop. I even stuck my dong in a glass of milk. Nothing worked. Just had to wait for the pain to subside. When I was a kid, I was left home alone for the first time ever. My mom wasn't able to answer her phone, so I talked to a co-worker about how to make a grilled cheese sandwich. They told me to butter the bread, put the cheese in the middle, put it on the stove, and then flip it over after about 2 minutes on each side. So I did just that, however they neglected to tell me to use a frying pan. I put the bread directly onto the coils, and I ended up calling and asking why it was so smoky. The neighbors ended up rushing upstairs because they thought that I had started a fire. I still get made fun of by my family to this day. I didn't know how to make french toast, so I mixed pancake batter, dipped a piece of bread into it and laid it on the griddle. The result was an extra bready, untasty pancake. Spent the morning making a stack of pancakes only to mistakenly pour soap instead of syrup on them. I'm not smart sometimes. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.